there are some games you wish you could forget playing, just so you could experience them again for the first time. For me, Elden Ring is one of those games. And now, after playing nearly 50 hours of Shadow of the Erd Tree, I'm delighted to say that it evokes that very same feeling. Elden Ring's first and only expansion isn't without its flaws, but it's artisanally crafted and a joy to explore. It's impressively expansive, packed to the brim with secrets, and hauntingly beautiful from start to finish. From the moment I set foot in the Lands of Shadow, I was stunned by its gorgeous scenery and captivated by its world, but the most impressive thing of all is the sheer scale of what's on offer. Let's start with the elephant in the room. Just how big is Shadow of the Erd Tree? Elden Ring's expansion just spent two years in the making, and From Software is famous for over-delivering, so it's understandable if you're expecting something gargantuan. And if you are, you'd be right. I can confidently say that the Land of Shadow is so big, and there's so much to discover, I wouldn't be surprised if it's the biggest singular piece of post-launch content ever made. It easily rivals full open-world games in size and scope, and From Software should be commended for Shadow of the Erdtree's magnitude alone. I won't spoil how many map pieces there are, but there are more than I was expecting, and I was blown away by the diversity of the environment. Almost every region looks and feels different, with unique enemies, vibrant colours and gorgeous details starkly contrasting with the blighted Skadu tree looming on the horizon. There are rolling blue fields, eerie golden plains, murky forests, ancient crumbling ruins, and so much more. I was surprised time and time again by the uniqueness of all the areas I encountered, and those discoveries make Shadow of the Erdtree's world incredibly rewarding to explore. I honestly think the Land of Shadow could be From Software's best designed world yet. The whole map is an intricate puzzle with a staggering amount of verticality, and it continually arouses an epic feeling of discovery, like you're setting foot in a strange, foreign, unwelcoming land for the very first time. Miyazaki recently said Shadow of the Earth Tree is not quite open world, and he's right. You start in a fairly open area, but many regions are either too high up or too far below for you to reach, and you'll spend a big chunk of your playthrough looking at places on the map, then racking your brain trying to figure out how to get there. These paths are often hidden inside optional dungeons, through inconspicuous caves and down well-hidden holes in the ground, so you better get used to exploring every nook and cranny if you want to see the whole map. The Land of Shadow is shrouded in mystery, and like you, the characters you meet are exploring its secrets too. You'll encounter around a dozen new NPCs, all of whom have eerily vague, albeit well-written dialogue lines and mysterious motivations. Some, like Needle Knight Leder, are trying to work out where Mikola is and why he travelled to the Land of Shadow. It's interesting to meet characters with similar motivations to your own, and I found their stories intriguing for the most part, but didn't manage to complete any optional quests because of how vague they all are. Like the base game and every Souls game that came before, the story is hopelessly confusing. Even by the end, I still had no idea what was going on or why we were fighting who we were, I was left with far more questions than answers. But, as a decade-long Souls fanboy, I'm more than used to it by now. As usual, you'll have to watch a lore video or two to get the full scoop, but you'll still have a great time exploring the world and overcoming its challenges without the full context. And if it's a challenge you're looking for, you've come to the right place. The dungeons are all filled with formidable threats, with a mixture of new enemy types and familiar foes. Most enemies attack faster than those in the base game, and many have gap closers and long, unpredictable combos. They can easily kill you in a few hits, even if you're careful, so expect to die a lot. From my experience, Shadow of the Earth Tree is definitely harder than the base game, and probably on par with Liza P's last few levels. If you've beaten Elden Ring recently, you'll find the difficulty about right, but if you're a bit rusty or you're new to the genre, you might struggle. The hardest parts of Shadow of the Erdtree are undoubtedly its legacy dungeons. There are kind of two, although they both have multiple sections and you revisit them later. They really feel like peak From Software level design. The first is a crumbling castle town with loads of branching paths, and I absolutely adored exploring its winding streets, dank interiors, and windswept rooftops.
Above all, though, the bosses are the cherry on top, and they're easily among the most challenging encounters From Software has ever designed. I've beaten Elden Ring several times with multiple characters and rarely needed spirit summons to kill a boss, but I really struggled without them in Shadow of the Earth Tree. Certain fights are so hard that I genuinely don't know how I would have succeeded without using the Mimic tier, which speaks volumes about their difficulty. There are 10 major bosses, and they all have multiple phases and ruthlessly aggressive movesets, and they're paired with an epic orchestral soundtrack that's among the best in From Software's history. None of the fights were duds. They're all top-tier encounters that put your skills to the test without feeling unfair, with the notable exception of the final boss. The last encounter is one of the hardest bosses I've ever faced in a video game, especially the second phase. You have to survive tons of AoE damage and a near-constant barrage of attacks. I had to respec twice before I managed to beat him. I used the Red Bear Claw, a new Beast Claw type weapon that causes bleed buildup, with 80 strength and as much defense as I could muster, and even then, I only barely managed it by the skin of my teeth. It was a heart-pounding victory and an epic fight, so despite how many attempts it took, I'm honestly fine with Elden Ring's final, final boss being such a big challenge. Having said that though, it didn't really feel like a final boss, and I didn't expect it to be the end of the expansion. Maybe you'll feel the same when you experience it for yourself. I actually spent a couple of hours after beating the boss looking for the next place to go, only to realise that was it, there was nothing more to see. It was an anticlimactic end to such an epic experience, and part of me still wonders whether there's another dungeon with an extra final boss that I've missed out on. On the whole, I had a great experience with Shadow of the Earth Tree, but I did encounter a few other issues I'd be remiss not to mention. Certain bosses occasionally stop attacking you and stand still for a few seconds mid-fight, and I found a few areas with wonky collision where you can walk into the terrain. These are only minor bugs though and nothing game-breaking, but hopefully From Software fixes them in time for launch. And while I absolutely loved exploring the world and discovering its secrets for the first time, I do wonder whether that enjoyment will still hold up on my second, third, and fourth playthroughs. This won't concern every player, but replayability is one of the best parts of the Souls games, and Elden Ring's replayability does suffer because of its openness. Once you know where everything is, all the routes, bosses, and secrets, you can simply ride straight to your destination and ignore everything on the way, and the same is true in Shadow of the Earth Tree. I also think locking Shadow of the Earth Tree behind such a late game boss wasn't From Software's best decision. It makes sense from a lore perspective, sure, and it's great that Shadow of the Earth Tree presents itself as a super difficult late game challenge, but it would have been nice if we could access the Land of Shadow a bit earlier. There are over a hundred new weapons to experiment with, but you'll never be able to use one with a fresh character, which is a huge missed opportunity. For most players, though, the biggest complaint will be all the returning enemies. You encounter tons of enemies from the base game throughout Shadow of the Earth Tree. There are Troll Knights, Finger Creepers, Tibia Mariners, and even ulcerated Tree Spirits of all things. Certain major bosses even show up again, one of whom is bound to be controversial, but there was enough newness in the mix that I really didn't mind at all. Lastly, I think there are too many Sites of Grace, and that's a criticism I had of the base game too. It's a trend that started in Dark Souls 3 and unfortunately continues in Shadow of the Earth Tree. Occasionally, you'll kill a boss, and it'll summon a new Site of Grace a few yards away from the last one. The legacy dungeons are all wonderfully interconnected, but the sheer number of checkpoints makes most of that interconnectedness redundant. It's a fairly minor complaint in the grand scheme of things, but it's still a design choice I wish From Software would reconsider in future games. Even with my handful of complaints in tow, Shadow of the Earth Tree is an experience like no other that you absolutely should not miss out on. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the biggest expansion ever made, and the sheer quality of what's on offer here has to be unparalleled in the industry. There's easily as much content as a full open world game, and I loved every minute of the dozens of hours I spent exploring the Land of Shadow. All things considered, From Software did an excellent job crafting content that enhances an already incredible game. Shadow of the Earth Tree is nothing short of a remarkable achievement for Miyazaki and his talented team of developers, and it's absolutely worth its $40 price tag.